Hey guys, Dan Alexander here from Prestige Dog Grooming School and the Everyday Pet Groomer. I just wanted to come on and give you guys a couple little tips on kind of setting up a poodle puppy. Um, we're going to be doing some modern um, poodle trims on this guy in the future. Um, he's been put on our puppy program. He's from one of our breeders, so he's going on to our student program. Um, he's super cute. You guys have seen him before. He was in another live when I showed you guys how to do a poodle face. So he's kind of grown up now a bit, right, Odie? He's grown up. So um, we're finally going to set in his top knot, and we're just going to put some basic lines in him. So I just wanted to show you guys that and just how to do a quick little bevel. So quick little groom. So we'll just show you a couple tips, and um, I missed you guys. So just want to say hi. Okay, let's flip you around and see what we can get. Just want to actually not come to you. So we have our guy here. I've done a three quarter inch on the body. I've faded off at the elbow and I've taken it in similar to Schnauzer lines. I've taken off the rear end and then faded into his leg. We want to particularly leave growth on the hawk to grow in. This is all his puppy coat. Now his adult coat's coming in. I've set in his tail. We're not going to do any scissoring on his tail till it grows in. We've done clean feet, some basic bevels and now I'm just going to scissor in some strong angles. Um, I'm going to start with my rear end here. Uh, poodles are very, very beautiful because of their extreme angles. I'm going to hold his tail out of the way to the side, comb up. I'm going to come with my curved shears actually and just right dust into the hair there. And just dusting into his rear end. Okay, and what happens is once I put him up, you can see that that sets a really nice little shelf on his rear end here, just at that 45 degree angle. I like to leave a little bit of hair out here, so I'm going to leave this little area here, but I am going to come straight down here. Again, I'm using my curved shears. I just like how the tip can get right in places that I need. So see how that gives us just a nice little shapely derriere. Again, just setting in some basic angles can make all the difference in your grooms. Now I wanna be very gentle on this area because a poodle, right where this the leg bends, that's where we wanna end that line. So we're already right there, so I don't wanna take this curve too deep like, a, like in the schnauzers and the terriers. Okay, so I wanna comb this out. I just wanna lightly dust it so that the worlds come together. But again, this guy's puppy, we're growing him out to be in modern poodle trim, so we're gonna to wanna to go at it lightly. So see, scissoring should be very basic and simple. I need that to grow in into a nice hawk. See? So we just set in his little derriere lines. So I haven't done any scissoring on him yet, so I'm combing down. Again, another lesson on how well prepped and how your dog should look before you even begin scissoring. So I'm scissoring simple. In here, I've taken this area shorter. So I did a three quarter inch on the body. I did my dark blue on the inside areas and the inside of his back legs to touch them up. That makes this scissoring here really, really simple because I just have a tiny little curtain to work with, which makes it really easy. And plus when you're scissoring puppy coat, it's always easy. Coming in here, I like to just push the skin a bit with my fingers, that way that pops out so I can come and get this tuck up really nice. Okay, always put it back. Once it's where it needs to be, reposition, brief snip. I also like to double check my inside area. So if you guys want to view from here, come around. See, so once you comb that out, this is an area so many groomers neglect and forget. Make sure you come in this inside area and get that all scissored up as well. And I always comb down to check my work with the wide side of my comb. Just checking everything, making sure I'm happy, making sure my lines are good. But it should be nice and simple and basic. With the front, I'm just going to take a bit off the elbow, start to team this thing in, but just lightly. I want to do a nice column leg with lots of hair on the back of the front leg eventually. So we're going to let that grow in. I'm just going to take that light, and I am going to create a little bit more angulation on his front. So I'm going to comb out, hold it up, scissor in. I'm looking from a side view, and just dusting in, and then I'm just going to take in a little bit in the front of his front leg, just to set this very straight down to the foot. And these, just these little things can make all the difference in your profile of your dog. Can you see from a profile view how nice this guy's looking? 
Well, all we did was set in some angulation on his bum, tucked in his front, tucked in his underbelly, and now we've got some really great pup coming along here. And especially once we grow this hair in, we're gonna have a gorgeous little guy coming together. So I'll just flip around here and show you guys a quick bevel here. Come on, buddy, let's turn around. I know, my phone's going crazy. Come on, buddy. I'm just gonna show you guys this other side. Come here, little buddy. Okay, so same thing on this side. We're gonna come in, I'm gonna set that extreme angle, set it in, and then I just lightly dust. Sorry guys, my phone's. My phone answering system can be a little naive sometimes. Tail down. I like to double check with the tail down because then I can make sure that that line is nice. Up. Now remember this line I want to set. I don't want to take off anything here, but I do want to tighten this here. So and I want to go right to where his leg naturally bends. So setting that in. I'm going to come in with my thin shear, or sorry, my curved shears reverse. I'm just gonna set a nice, harsh, straight line there. Whoa, not like that, guys. If you do make a boo-boo, just come in. You know what it's like grooming puppies. They do unpredictable things and just lightly dust it in. You're not gonna be able to fix it, but you can definitely hide it. So there it's hidden. So now we come in and get that nice line set in there. And now I need to be blend these worlds together. Again, we don't want to take this too deep. A lot of people end up taking this really deep. And I do that on my doodles, but on a true poodle, we don't want to do that. We just want to bring that line to there. And then we need to grow this out into a nice, thick, full hawk. So to do that, we just need to just barely dust these worlds in. Okay. I'm going to blend in this area on his hip. Again, we took it in those kind of schnauzer lines. So I've combed it out. And I'm just going to lightly dust. I'm lining up the tips of my shears just into the coat that I've already clipped. So I can get that blend. Okay, scissoring should not be complicated. I comb down to check my work and see how my blend is coming. I'm gonna take a little bit off the front. And again, we're gonna come and fix up the tuck up here. And again, because I took my inside areas nice and short already with clippering, I came in with a shorter length and tucked all that in, makes my Scissoring my underline super simple and quick. I need to check my inside area here. I'm just gonna come. Make sure that's all scissored. Again, this is fairly basic since I took out the inside areas a bit shorter. Again, this is a pet, so you can still get gorgeous haircuts that are more easily maintained by owners by doing some of these simple tricks. And they're really fast grooms. You can see that this scissor, if I wasn't even talking and teaching at the same time, this would be like a 20 minute groom for me, this whole thing. So, and he's a moyen sized poodle. Now mind you, he's got a poodle coat. So 20 minutes to clip and scissor him. Very, very simple and quick. So this is often what I do on my puppies as well. Obviously we'd leave feet on a doodle puppy or something, but this guy got clean feet being a poodle. Um, I'm gonna show you a quick bevel here. I like to come in with the foot up, comb everything towards myself. And first I'm gonna come and just layer everything flush with the pad on the back and right into the leg, going to slightly up, okay? Put that down, that's gonna bevel my bottom out. Then I'm gonna come, line up the bottom. Let you guys flip around here. I'm gonna get this band here. Come around. I just like to set it first, okay? And then I'm gonna come and lift it up. And when I lift it up, I'm gonna fluff everything And I see, I'm just gonna come in and get this inside layer perfect, right along the skin. And then I'm just gonna lightly set the base of my shear in like a windshield washer motion. I'm just gonna lightly dust that off. A lot of people are afraid to take these bevels nice and high. The higher you make them, it actually makes their leg look longer. So coming in, touching up anything once the weight is on it. But super quick, easy bevels that make his leg look awesome. And then when we go in when he's a bit older and we full scissor this, it's just gonna look gorgeous. For now, we are trying to maintain some of this puppy coat and just get him some basic poodle lines drawn in. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Come and set his chest. 
Linnell asks, what brand of curves are you using and what the length of them? This is an eight and a half uh, Sassy Dog, uh, Sassy Dog by Angie Partition. She's an admin in the group. And again, I don't work for Sassy Dog. I don't get any perks for showing their stuff. I just love their stuff because for the cost, this is real 440C Japanese steel, guys. Like this is gonna last a lifetime for a groomer. Like, and this is real. Like a lot of 440C is not true 440C, okay? This is the real deal and it's proven on the sharpening wheel. You can see the difference. And so these are gonna last a lifetime for a groomer if you take them to a good sharpener. So that's why I recommend these so much. And then she just, Angie, since she was a groomer herself before, she just knows the design of the shank is beautiful. Just the way the thumb hold is, just slightly angled out. They just fit so nicely. Um, the way this um, bolt is put in is just beautiful too. The balance is nice. Those are all the reasons I love this brand. And then the cost is amazing, amazing. So I th think these are around 150 Canadian which for this quality is incredible. My other 440C, true 440C shears were around $300 for one. So Angie's can't be beat. So anyways, you guys can see that's our setting in our basic profile. Let me set in a quick top knot and then he doesn't have enough hair for a true top knot yet, but let's give him the basic shape and then we'll move on. So I've cleared out under here already. I'm gonna comb everything to the side. My first cut is going to be on the side, and I'm taking it right eye corner to the ear. Okay, right in front of the ear with the ear flipped back, I'm going to take that out. Okay, when they have little curls and things, make sure you pull those out and re scissor. You don't want to take off too much though, because any little curly cues that will be affected. But you see, slight angle out. Okay, coming this side, this is his first time that he's had scissored guys. So. Coming in, you notice my shears are slightly angled out, not straight up and down. Angled out. Cut. You notice I'm following through all the way up. Stop. And then come in front of the ear. Make sure that's all scissored with the ear flipped open. And then make sure that edge all along. Eye corner to ear is nice and clean. But you'll notice it's a slight angle outwards. Okay? Otherwise, you're going to end up sloping head in and just have a bit of a mohawk type of thing. You don't want that. So same thing, combing everything forward. And I'm going to angle slightly out, not straight up and down, out. Okay, this is a straight cut across. See, it's very straight and square. And then I'm going to come and get this layer underneath, clean that up, and connect it to where I scissored on the side. Does that make sense? So I'm working on the layer underneath, okay? Just like we did, if you guys remember, just like we did on the bevel. Everything is the same techniques, just reused in different places. So just like I went and touched up the edge on this bevel, that's exactly what I'm doing here. All the top knot is is a giant bevel. Okay, coming in, connecting that layer to where I've already scissored. And now I just need to bring my scissors up a notch and do the next layer and connect. And I'm gonna come and connect this way, see that? And that's how you end up with a top knot that comes out, is clean around the eyes, and then doesn't slope too much. So see, once I puff him up, you'll see that the shape is coming in really nicely. He's not long enough to do a full top knot yet, but we got the basics set in here. I want a little bit more out by the, by the, in between the eyes here. Kind of a personal preference, so I'm gonna take a bit more. And now I'm gonna see the profile, see? Now I am going to come in and separate his ear and top knot so he's more traditional. But all I'm going to do is line up my shears with where I've already scissored. Come in, no, 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 and create that separation. I'm going to slightly blend out that top just so it's not so harsh. Okay, so we've got that now clear definition between his ears and top knot. I'm going to do the same thing. What you do to one side, repeat on the other side. You guys know what I love to say. Coming in. Create that separation. Scissors, so don't lightly dust the top off. A little bit at the back here. Now we have that definition, side to side. I'm gonna fluff them up. And I'm just looking for anything I can, you know, kind of adjust, but I do know he needs a lot more length in to get the true shape that I want. 
and we are growing him out. So I'm not going to take off too much because this puppy coat can give us so much volume and length sooner if we let it stay. So I'm just going to lightly dust off the back end. Dust off. You're good. He's getting a bit anxious. So when he knows his mom's in the car outside. So <laughs> I know you're such a good boy though. He's a nice little guy. Okay, so that's your basics. So I'm just setting some basic lines in poodles as he's a puppy. Now, I, I don't like how poofy this is, but I know once his top knot's full and this comes out, we're gonna get the right shape. So it is a, a work in progress. Remember, anytime you're doing a puppy, it's a work in progress. But you wanna get that nice profile. Bye. See, beautiful dog. I know, he's a little wiggle worm, but we love him. Right, Odie? I know, you're a good boy. Well, thanks, guys. That's uh, best tips for setting in some very simple poodle lines just to give it that fancy look without the work and without the stress. So hope some of those tips helped you guys out, and we'll see you again. Have a great Monday.